Good morning, everyone. Calling the roll for the Monday, October 29th Board of Control meeting. It is now 11.02 a.m. Nan Baker, Dale Miller, Here. Trevor Mackler serving as an alternate for Dan Brady, Here. Michael Dever, Here. Armin Budish, Here. excuse me, Lenora Lockett, <laughs> and also the illustrious Dennis Kennedy. <laughs> we have a quorum. <laughs> it was his birthday last week, so I was just waiting to make him last. <laughs> oh, I don't know that we knew that. Happy birthday. All right, the minutes from October 22nd. Any comments or questions or changes? Seeing none, I move to approve. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Dever. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? The minutes are approved. Public comment? No public comment at this time. And one tabled item. Yes, we do. Item number BC 2018-707, Department of Development. It's a two-part item. A, submitting an RFP exemption on requisition 43650, which will result in an award recommendation to National Council for Community Development, Inc., doing business as the National Development Council in the amount not to exceed $91,000, and it's for economic development, technical assistance services, and it's for the period November 1st, 2018 through December 31st, 2019, and B, recommending the award in connection with said RFP exemption. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Greg Huth with the Development Department. Uh, this was item was held last week because we didn't have all of our ducks in a row with OPD. We've done that over the past week. As I said before, it's for technical services. They provide us with a variety of training uh, options that. We also offer to all the communities within the county. They also help us from not time to time with underwriting, and I know they're going to be really critical to us as the, or the Opportunity Zone program rolls out at the federal level. So Thank I would you. ask your approval. Any questions? Seeing none, I move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Item passes. Thank you. Thank you. New Moving items. on to new items, item BC 2018-730, Department of Public Works, submitting an amendment to a contract with Hannah Holdings, Inc. for property management services for the Samuel R. Gerber Cuyahoga County Medical Examiner's Building and Parking Garage, located at 1101 Cedar Avenue, Cleveland. And it's for the period November 1st, 2013 through October 31st, 2018 to extend the time period to October 31st, 2019 and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $220,000. Uh, Mike Chambers of Public Works asking for approval of this one year time extension and dollars. Uh, basically, uh, the 220 is broken down. $60,000 is for the monthly management fee, which equates to $5,000 a month. $90,000 is for capital repair of the building plumbing system, and then $70,000 for operating surprise, um, excuse me, operating expenses. Thank you. Are there any questions? Sure. Councilman Miller. Do we own this building? Yes, we do. And uh, why don't we manage our own building like we do with with the other buildings? This arrangement's been since the beginning of this building. Uh, we are actually looking at it. Um, we've been undertaking a, quite a few capital projects this past year. Uh, our goal is during this next year is to send our crews over there, start learning the building, and put together a proposal to take it over. Okay. Looking at it. Any other questions? Seeing none, I move to approve. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Dever. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item passes. Thank you. Next item, BC 2018-731, Department of Public Works, submitting an amendment to a contract with ACOM Services of Ohio, Inc. for general architectural engineering services, and it's for the period March 21st, 2016 through March 20th, 2019, to extend the time period to December 31st, 2019, and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $100,000. Nicole English with Public Works. This is an increase to AECOM's contract. They are the general architect um, and engineer for the um, Halley building. And so we're looking to just extend their contract so we can use them for some additional projects coming up um, in the future that were not contemplated in the original um, project. Since they are the designer of record, it makes the most sense since they're already familiar and designed the system to keep them on board. It was competitively, competitively bid originally um, when we selected them. Any questions? Seeing none, I move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed. Thank you. 
Next item is a two-part item, item BC 2018-732, Department of Public Works. It's a two-part item. Uh, part A, submitting an RFP exemption on requisition 43759, which will result in an award recommendation to Integrated Precision Systems, Inc., in the amount not to exceed $29,981.24 for the purchase and installation of five security cameras, two proximity card readers, and one intercom for the Halley Building parking lot, located at the southeast corner of Perkins Avenue and East 40th Street in Cleveland. And it's for the period October 29th, 2018 through May 31st, 2019, and B, recommending the award in connection with said RP exemption. Nicole Thank English you. again with Public Works. So this is a um, supportive purchase related to the Chester Avenue parking lot, which we purchased and that we're rehabbing um, so it could be online. And this is the equipment required by the Sheriff's Department for security of the lot. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Councilman Miller. Why did we need an RFP exemption rather than just doing a standard bid process? Because it's a... Um, designated vendor so that it's in the same with every um, with all the other lots that are coordinated in the sheriff's system so they have a maintenance contract our understanding is through I'm sorry she is here but they helped us um, the maintenance contracts through 2022 any other questions mr. Kennedy uh, you probably aren't the right person but who coordinates all the, like the retention schedules for all these cameras and? I assume it's the sheriff's department is the one who maintains the system, so I assume it comes through the sheriff's. I mean, department. I know, like at Auto Title, we have diff there's different retention schedules for every building. Shouldn't they all be the, like sixty days or you know it's of the the video. Yeah. yeah, that's beyond public works. I don't it, think it went does. from uh, the IT department over to the sheriff's office, so we'll need somebody from their office to kind okay. of outline, you know, what those responsibilities are. So I'll uh, reach out to Sheriff Payton on this. So okay, thanks, Nicole. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, I move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item passes. Thank you. Next item, item BC 2018-733 is a two-part item, Department of Information Technology, A, submitting an RFP exemption on requisition 43816, which will result in an award recommendation to Logicalis, Inc. in the amount not to exceed $8,448.95, and is for the <laughs> installation of cable and three NATEP desk shelves, and it's for the County Enterprise Storage Area Network at the State of Ohio Computer Center, located in Columbus and the Blue Ridge Networks in Cleveland, and B, recommending the award in connection with said RFP exemption. Good morning, Dennis Sullivan, Department of IT. The exemption is through uh, GSA pricing for this professional services. This is strictly for the installation, cabling and installation of the hardware. Uh, items have already been purchased, the hard drives and the shelving and the cabling. Uh, will be put in at both the uh, Columbus and the Cleveland location for the call centers. This is entirely due to the upgrade of the voice system and the storage area networks associated with it. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Councilman Miller. How can stuff already have been purchased if we haven't approved this yet? Oh, I think the, the previous hardware was approved. It was approved in a previous purchase. This is only for the installation. Understood. Yeah, we haven't done anything without approval. Uh, yes, Councilwoman Baker. Uh, at the time that we made the purchase, was there perhaps an installation package that came with that, or uh, given that we're using the vendor that they're recommending? I don't know that for a fact, ma'am. I would assume, you know, having just sat here, but I would assume the hardware is strictly a, a one-off purchase. It was strictly a buy and the need for the cable and the installation was identified. I guess the only reason I ask is because it, your explanation of why it, it is a, um, not a sole source, but, um, or is it a, it's, it's an exemption, is because we need to use them recommended by the purchase. So the exemption is through the pricing, actually, the GSA pricing. Not, not dictated by the manufacturer. Could have went either way, to be honest with you. Technically, it could have went GSA pricing or it could have went professional services. 
we don't usually do professional services as just a form. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sure, that, that was uh, my question for clarification because we asked a, an advanced question on this and it said that the vendor NetApp is requiring that we use this vendor. That's right. I mean, so I think where the council was going. That's where you were going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would, yeah, my understanding, just so you're, my understanding is that it would break the warranty and the maintenance agreement with NetApp mm -hmm. if you didn't use their authorized retailer. I, then, I mean, that's where I would almost say it's, it's sole source in the sense that that's the only provider that can provide this service. But um, uh, again, it gets technical in the fact, though, what truly is sole source? There's no one else available to do it. That's not entirely true. But they protect their resellers by making them regional authorized resellers and protect the business. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Seeing none, I move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Miller. All those in favor, please say aye. Opposed, item passes, thank you. Next item, BC 2018-734, Department of Information Technology, recommending a sole source award on requisition 43546 to OPEX Corporation in the amount not to exceed $4,995. And it's for the purchase, installation, and configuration of one Windows 10 PC for use with the OPEX system software platform. Good morning, Dennis Sullivan again with the Department of IT. This equipment is used over at the uh, Virgil Brown building by HHS. They're processing about uh, 5,000 pieces of return mail a month. Uh, the state did an upgrade to Windows 10 because of the interface with the state system. Now we have to upgrade on our side. Thank you. Questions? Seeing none, I move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item passes. Thank you. Next item is a two-part item, item number BC 2018-735, Department of Information Technology, A, submitting an RFP exemption on requisition 43934, which will result in an award recommendation to Dell Marketing LP in the amount not to exceed $1,791.64, and it's for the purchase of four Microsoft Project professional subscription licenses for new enterprise resource planning staff and B, recommending the award in connection with said RFP exemption. Good morning, Don Sullivan again with the Department of IT. This is for, as stated, this is for additional staff. These are client named licenses, so they'll go into the master service agreement we have with uh, Dell, which expires in 2020. That way we control the naming of the license if someone were to move on to a different project or leave the county or whatever. We would take it in the pool and be able to reissue it to another client. Thank you. Questions? Seeing, oh, Councilman Miller. Does this count toward the uh, capital installation cost or toward the uh, operating expense on the ERP system? We don't have it. I don't know when this come up. We don't have it charged to the ERP. We talked Wednesday about the fact that this is in the general fund. The master service agreement has what they call in the industry a true up agreement at, the, at different periods of the year. So this will just be an item that's within the master service agreement. It'll be a true up as far as how many licenses we actually have activated and named as buyers. And it was paid out of general fund, which is out of our operating budget. Okay. Further questions? Seeing none, I move to approve. Is there a second? Second by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item passes. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, BC 2018-736, Department of Communications, recommending an award on requisition 42760 and enter into a contract with Baldwin Wallace University in the amount not to exceed $28,269. And it's for the community survey services for the period October 29th, 2018 through October 28th, 2019. Eliza Wing, Department of Communications. This is a um, contract that was, uh, well, hopefully we're, will be awarded through the RFP process regarding a community survey that we're hoping to field. And I know you had advanced questions, which I believe you had the answer supplied. Thank you. Questions? Mr. McAleer. Uh, no, no questions. I just want to say thanks for uh, the thorough response. It was a lengthy uh, response. It was helpful to understand the scope of the project. Good. 
Thanks. Any other questions? Councilwoman Baker. So um, in reading the, the backup to this, it says we're going to work with the survey steering team and other county staff to determine most cost effective reasonable. So you know, the ultimate goal of this, and I got the outline too, I really had a chance to look at it that thoroughly, is to go out to the community? Is this a community survey? Absolutely, yep, with about 1,100 responses anticipated. So it's a phone, landline, cell phone, social media, and um, actually face-to-face uh, -face interviews in neighborhoods. May I follow? Is there any particular reason why we're choosing now to do this? Um, is there any, are we targeting particular agencies that people are using mm. and asking their response as to whether they are getting good care and, or is it just blanketed across the entire county? It's a blanket survey. So it's been part of the strategic imperative for um, the county to understand, to deliver superior services and recognizing that we actually don't have a baseline measurement for what residents understand to be our services and then what their um, uh, satisfaction is with those services. Uh, it felt imperative for us to go out and do a survey, uh, but we had to get through the strategic planning process and you know find the budget and all that good stuff. So it's been a the uh, if I may the twenty eight thousand is that a total cost mailings the whole whole thing mm -hmm. you won't be back for more dollars because whatever expenses are beyond the scope of what you're asking for here. No, this is the entire Package. cost of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there, if I may, I'm just curious, the um, agencies that are in place that are actively serving those that are in need, you're not asked, are you at least setting aside a part of this survey for them to see whether or not, because they are actually engaged, whether or not the services are good? So if I understand your question, um, that there are agencies that deliver services and to make sure that we're capturing what those services are and then asking the questions. Right. The answer is yes. Um, it is also important though to um, fine tune and hone the survey because you can't ask you know, yeah. 50 questions or you lose people. So it, that'll be part of the, the work of structuring the survey is to make sure that we ask the right questions. But that's why we're working with professionals who are used to doing this in the field. And that's also why uh, we'll be getting input from other people within the county as to what we should be asking. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. McLean. Uh, is it gonna be uh, a mailing survey or is it over the phone or how? What? So landline and cell phones and then social media encouraging people to actually take the survey through one of those instruments. And the landline, my understanding is that there's a l delivery of a link as well. Um, and then also face-to-face, -face. so they'll be having people going out into targeted neighborhoods and speaking directly with people. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. Any other questions? Yes. Councilwoman Baker. Will there be forums? Will you be going to different communities and trying to foster some community input that way? So that's a different way of surveying uh, information, and it's a little bit more qualitative as opposed to quantitative and it's more of a focus group approach. Um, pretty expensive to field. This is really our best, most effective way of getting that information. But I do think, I feel uh, really good about the, the people going out and doing the, the surveys in the neighborhoods because we will be targeting specific zip codes, making sure that we're getting representative responses and really reaching out. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, I move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Item passes. Thank you. Next item, BC 2017, I'm sorry, BC 2018-737, Department of Public Safety and Justice Services, recommending an award on requisition 42414 to Laurus Systems, Inc., in the amount not to exceed $145,848, and it's for the purchase of one Furrier Transform Infrared Spectro... Spectro spectroscopy, I'm sorry, system, and it's for the Lake County Type 1 hazmat response bomb slash teams. 
Good morning, Mary Beth from Public Sa Mary Beth Bond from Public Safety, and this is to replace equipment that Lake County purchased in 2005. It is a chemical identifier that will identify whether, it, regardless of whether or not it's a liquid, a solid, or a vapor. We actually competitively bid this purchase three times. Uh, the third time we did receive three bids. The lowest bid, however, had to be disqualified. They were asking for 11 changes to the county's terms and conditions that were not agreeable to us or to the law department. So we're making a recommendation to the next lowest bidder. Thank you. Questions? Councilman Miller. How much difference in price was there between the lowest bidder and the next lowest bidder? I'm afraid I didn't bring that, but doing it from the top of my head, I want to say the lowest bidder was like 133000 if I'm not mistaken. But the changes that they were asking for were actually real material changes. Um, they wanted to change the um, defects, um, it was the, our, our term for accepting defects. They wanted to change the liability coverage. They were some pretty substantial changes that they were looking for. Uh -huh. And we actually um, sent this down to Ohio EMA, who's paying for this purchase, and they agreed with us. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. Yep. This Councilwoman is a, Baker. Thank you. This is a 2016 grant. Correct. This is 2018. Is that no problem there? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, the gr performance period for this grant is three years. The performance period actually ends next March. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, I move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Miller. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Item passes. Thank you. Next item, BC 2018-738, Department of Public Safety and Justice Services, Office of Emergency Management, submitting an amendment to a contract with Audiovisual Innovations, Inc. for installation and maintenance services for equipment located at the Juvenile Justice Center training room, also in the Courthouse Square and Cuyahoga Emergency Communication Systems area. And it's for the period October 1st, 2014 through November 9th, 2018 to extend the time period to November 9th, 2021. And for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $22,473.70. This contract is just to continue our maintenance for the audiovisual equipment used in the Emergency Operations Center. Um, this is equipment that was purchased in 2012 and in 2016. Thank you. Questions? Seeing none, I move to approve. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Dever. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item passes. Thank you. Next item, BC 2018-739, Department of Public Safety and Justice Services, recommending an award on requisition 42915 to Motorola Solutions in the amount not to exceed $21,912.59. And it's for the purchase of 17 Project 25 700-800 megahertz portable radios for use by the Gialga County Sheriff's Department for the period October 31st, 2018 through April 30th, 2019. This is uh, to replace radios that are currently used by the Gialga County Sheriff's Department. The radios that they are using have been discontinued by the manufacturer. We did issue a formal bid and we're making a recommendation to award to the lowest price vendor. Thank you. Questions? Seeing none, I move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Miller. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. Thank you. Next item is a two-part item, item BC 2018-740, Department of Public Safety and Justice Services, A, requesting authority to apply for grant funds from Ohio Department of Public Safety, Office of Criminal Justice Services, in the amount of $22,847.44, and it's for the Fiscal Year 2018 Stop Violence Against Women Act Administrative Grant Program, and it's for the period January 1st, 2019 through December 31st, 2019 and B, submitting the grant award in connection with the grant application. The uh, VAWA grant is to strengthen effective law enforcement and prosecution strategies and services to combat crimes against women. This particular grant pays for uh, the portion of two positions in our office, specifically a program officer and a budget officer who actually work on this grant. Thank you. Questions? Seeing none, I move to approve. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Passes. Thank you. 
Next item, Department of, I'm sorry, next item, BC 2018-741, Department of Health and Human Services, Cuyahoga Job and Family Services, submitting an amendment to a contract with Catholic Charities Corporation for intensive case management, vocational assessment, and counseling services for Ohio Works First cash assistance and disability financial assistance recipients with barriers to employment, and it's for the period, July 1st, 2015 through December 31st, 2018 to extend the time period to March 31st, 2019 and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $45,000. Morning, David Merriman, Department of Health and Human Services. I'm bringing forward an item that relates to a series of items we discussed last week. This is a third contract that will be uh, amended to add a short-term extension onto that will allow us to extend our program through the RFP and procurement process. Uh, if you recall last week, I think we discussed uh, the centers. There was also an extension of Verge. Catholic Charities is a, an additional part of the portfolio of services that we offer. Catholic Charities provides case management services to individuals on cash, cash assistance to help them address their barriers to be responsive to the programs that they have to participate in to uh, receive benefits as well as to be prepared for work. The extension that you'll see uh, before you does include a program, Disability Financial Assistance. That program has since been canceled by the state, although the, um, the, this was part of the original um, uh, uh, design of the program when we developed this. The primary thing that Catholic Charities does is it works with individuals that have either substance abuse, mental health, or other real significant barriers to address those barriers to be available for services. I'd be happy to answer any questions about this item. Thank you. Questions? Seeing none, I move to approve. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item passes. Thank you. Thank you. Next item, BC 2018-742, Department of Health and Human Services, Division of Children and Family Services, submitting an amendment to a contract with Case Western Reserve University, Mandel School of Applied Social Sciences, for provision of a child welfare specialist to assist with the development and facilitation of various programs in connection with the National Quality Improvement Center of Tailored Services, placement stability and permanency for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, questioning, and two-spirit children and youth in foster care grant program. And is for the period September 30th, 2017 through September 30th, 2021 to expand the scope of services to add statistical methods and research consultation services effective November 1st, 2018 and for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $4,211. Morning, Karen Anderson, uh, Division of Children and Family Services. That National and Quality uh, Improvement Center is a mouthful, isn't it? Um, <laughs> but they are, we are working on uh, our services. Case uh, Western is providing uh, required evaluation. They helped us develop the project in our original uh, contract. I, I think they got about 26,000. And when Maryland gave us additional funds, we were able to add some additional time in. So it's for a small amount. Thank you. Any questions? Um, Councilwoman Baker? Last week, wasn't it the Maryland? It again, was. So yes. um, this is a continuation of the same? It is. Uh, last week was for, there. we have two partners on this project that we developed the, the grant with, uh, Connect, which is a service organization, and Case Western. So last week it was Connect okay. that I was here. Um, they're providing direct face-to-face -face services for our young people and parents and um folks involved with child welfare in cases uh, doing the independent evaluation. Okay. And do you anticipate, is there more dollars coming that you know of? For um, actually, there is. Um, I received in my inbox this morning um, this year's uh, award from Maryland, um, which actually started 9-30-18, but um, the feds were delayed in getting it to Maryland, and so it was there this morning, and I, I put it into legal and um, so you'll see me back um, soon I hope uh, but that is again the awarding of uh, additional dollars for this year it's a five-year project but they um, send us a new agreement every year with the money okay good thank you thank you any other questions seeing none I move to approve is there a second second by Mr. McAleer all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. opposed Item passes, thank you. And now we're on to the consent agenda. 
Item 743 to 746. Are there any questions? Everybody had a chance to look. Does anybody have any questions? See none. I move to approve the consent agenda item 743 to 746. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Dever. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item passes. Thank you. And we do have some other business, I believe. Yes, we have um, six mission critical items. The first item is from Department of Public Works. Uh, recommending an award on requisition 43527 in the amount not to exceed $23,098.50 to SCAFCO scaffolding services. And it's for Justice Center safety scaffolding that was immediately required when a localized facade failure was discovered. Uh, good morning, Tom Pavich, Department of Public Works. Uh, this first uh, mission critical, the rec is uh, 43527. The dollar amount is $23,098.50. Uh, vendor Scafco Scaffolding, um, as Andre had mentioned, uh, the service was at the Justice Center Complex. Uh, it's for uh, safety scaffolding that was immediately required when uh, a piece of localized facade failure was discovered. Uh, we put this out in uh, buy speed for two hours, went to 16 vendors, we had no inquiries. Um, this is over the sheriff's entrance, so it's a safety issue with uh, people walking to and from the building, their sheriff's vehicles, and uh, just requesting your approval of this. Thank you. I move to uh, amend the agenda to consider the item. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. Opposed. Uh, the item uh, is uh, placed on the agenda. Is there any question about the substance? Councilwoman Baker. So did I hear you say a facade failure? Yeah, so it was localized to one area and then it was that discovered. Like rock or uh, building? Part of the exterior facade is, I'm not sure what the material of the Justice Center is, but it, it had fallen down. It was immediately uh, discovered as a very visible location. So wow. um, our trades, they acted immediately. They called us. We got the approval from Director uh, Dever. Um, and we call up SCAFCO. We put out in buy speed for two hours, and they were the only responders, and they were uh, deployed immediately. We inspected perhaps the rest of the building. It's currently in process right now. So, you know, obviously we can't just uh, address the first one. We have to address the entire area that is uh, in similar material. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, I move to approve the item. Is there a second? Seconded by Councilwoman Baker. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed? Item is approved. Thank you. Next item, Department of Public Works, recommending an award on requisition 44024 uh, in the amount not to exceed $3,347.50 to Mayor Plumbing and Heating, and it's for the services sanitary evacuation to dislodge camera sea snake. Uh, good morning, Tom Pavich, Department of Public Works. Um, again, uh, this is Rec 44020. Uh, this is uh, to Mayor Plumbing. This is actually uh, the, for the sanitary excavation to dislodge a camera sea snake. Uh, so our sanitary division was doing work around a uh, residence, and one of our uh, very expensive sea snakes got lodged, and uh, we don't have the equipment to actually dislodge it from in inside of a house. So we deployed uh, Mayor Plumbing, went in, did the excavation, and clean up, and we freed our snake. So. Thank you. I move to amend the agenda to consider the item. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Miller. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? The agenda is amended. Are there any questions on the item? Is one of those snakes worth? I believe they're in the 6000 range, six, six to $9,000. And then you, know, you got the cord that the snake is attached to, so that had to be extracted as well. So often we have to repair those. And they're not cheap to repair as well, just the dollar value. Any other questions? Councilwoman Baker. Is that an unusual occurrence that they would get stuck like that? Yeah, I think Mike knows. Yeah, Mike knows. 
that that's its purpose. Like it, Chambers uh, Public Works, it does happen from time to time. We've done over, I want to say like 12,000 house calls. We only get a couple of years where this okay. happens. So it's very rare, but it does happen. Hmm. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Seeing none, I move to approve the item. Is there a second? Seconded by Councilwoman Baker. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Item passes. Thank you. Next item is the Department of Information Technology recommending, I'm sorry, it's the Department of Public Works, <laughs> recommending an award on requisition 43495 in the amount not to exceed $3,211.74 uh, to Custom Trans Inc. for service repair of the protective services vehicle. And it's from the general fund. Uh, good morning, Tom Pavich, Public Works again. Uh, requesting approval, the REC is uh, 43495. Uh, the vendor was Custom Trans Inc. The services repair of one of the protective services vehicle. It was a, a 2008 Dodge Charger, uh, still in very good working condition. The transmission was blown. Um, it was non-drivable, and I believe the sheriff already had a few vehicles that were out of service, and you know it was a safety issue, uh, security issue to get this vehicle uh, diagnosed and repaired as soon as possible. So we, uh, you know, we uh, got custom trans to do the job. Thank you. I move to amend the agenda to consider the item. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Dever. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Item is added to the agenda. Are there any questions? Councilman Miller. Why would a car this new not be under warranty for something like that? Uh, it, it's actually uh, ten, 10 years old. Oh, what? 2008. Oh, 2008. I you said 2018. Oh, my okay. apologies. No, okay. it's 2008. It was uh, well into six figures of mileage, but it's still in operable condition. So, um. that was the reverse. Um, adding three thousand to a vehicle that's ten years old is. Yeah. I mean, are we looking to push that vehicle down when we start renewing these vehicles? Or um, is I think I've mentioned in the past, you know, the way our fleet works, everything's pushed down. So eventually, this car will probably be pushed down and reassigned elsewhere. Um, but for protective services, ten years old and just over, you know, six figure mileage, it's still operable for the fleet. Um, eventually, it'll probably uh, be repurposed. I'm sure. Thank you. I could make a joke about Councilman Miller thinking a 2008 vehicle is new, but <laughs> uh, any other questions? Yes, Mr. Kennedy. Rex says it's dated 96. I mean, we're, what's happened since 96? We were waiting for the invoice to come in. So once the work was done, you know, we were waiting for the invoice to actually get to us and signed off. Um, our fleet manager, he wanted to make sure because there was, I think, 20, 20 plus line items. And he'll go line item by line item with our vendors to make sure every piece was charged correctly. Um, you know, so we had to get that invoice. I'm just presenting it now. Any other questions? Seeing none, I move to approve the item. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilman Miller. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Item passes. Thank you. Item number four, Department of Public Works, recommending an award on requisition 43021 in the amount not to exceed $3,740. And uh, let me make sure. Okay, three $3,740 to Prism Glass for Juvenile Justice Center, ninth floor broken window cleanup and new installation of the window. And it's general fund slash internal services fund. Uh, good morning, Tom Pavich again, Public Works. Uh, this is uh, rec requesting mission critical to Prism Glass. It was a 3740 This is for the Juvenile Justice Center. Um, there was a ninth floor broken window. We deployed this vendor. Um, we put this out in buy speed for a few hours. Uh, Prism Glass is always a trusted vendor. You know, they've always been the only responder uh, when we do our diligence. This was for the ninth floor. There was a projectile that hit the ninth floor. Uh, the vendor came out, boarded it up, removed the existing broken window so it doesn't fall down below, boarded it up. Also, we had to uh, reorder the new window, and the vendor did install the new window for this. Was this related to the incident that occurred there some time ago or uh, it was there's there's no. different ones so um this was from the, to the best of our knowledge it's still under investigation but there was a projectile that came from the ground hit the ninth floor window came from outside yes yeah this was not the internal disruption okay i move to amend the agenda today to uh, consider the item is there a second second seconded by mr dever all those in favor please say aye 
Opposed? The agenda is amended. Any other questions? Councilwoman Baker. So if the, um, it broke from the outside, yes. do we, have we determined how that broke? Was it weather or? Uh, it was a projectile. What's that? I it was a projectile that was fired from the ground up, a bullet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Trying to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Wow. Yeah, ninth floor is pretty long shot. That is a long shot. Wow. And, uh, of course, no one hurt, no one aimed at. No. There was no, no. other no. speculation. No. Was from my it? understanding, it's still under investigation. I haven't That's heard right. anything elsewhere. Wow. And when did that happen? I mean, that's kind of a big deal. Bullet hitting a window. It was at least a, it was at least a month ago. About a month so ago. we had to get scaffolding up there for that. Okay, just one bullet is all they determined. Yes. Yeah. The whole window, of course. Yeah, and this window was. I think we had a three or four week lead time to actually get this window, but we had to get the same vendor to actually get up there and board up, take out the exterior window, um, and then order the new one once we gave him that go ahead. So we had a three to four week lead time just to order the window. And we're, uh, insurance would not, of course, cover this. We're self-insured. That's correct. Okay. Thanks. Sure. Any other questions? Mr. McLeod. Um, didn't we have one of these a couple weeks ago? Was that for the first phase of this? The scaffolding? Yes. That was a different phase. Okay. That was just for the Juvenile Justice Center. The one earlier today was for the Justice Center complex. You know, this particular, this particular window that had to be replaced with prism glass required scaffolding as well, unfortunately. Further questions? Seeing none, I move to approve the item. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? The item is approved. Thank you. Mission critical item number five is the Office of the Medical Examiner recommending an award on requisition 44004 to Nova Biomedical Corporation in the amount not to exceed $6,375 and it's for emergency repair of one CCX instrument for the period October 24th, 2018 through October 30th, 2018. And the funding source is the Medical Examiner's General Fund. Steve Shannon, Medical Examiner's Office. Uh, this was a uh, software malfunction in toxicology's blood gas analyzer, uh, which would not allow it to load, um, making it inoperable until it was repaired. I move to amend the item to consider the agenda to consider the item. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Dever. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Agenda is amended. Any questions on the item? Is uh, the medical examiner's general fund, is that general fund or is that the medical examiner's lab fund? General fund. General fund. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, I move to approve. Is there a second? Second by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item passes. Thank you. Thank you. And last uh, mission critical item is from the Department of Public, um, I'm sorry, the Department of uh, Health and Human Services. Uh, children and Family Services, and it is for an emergency placement of a child with Piney Ridge, requisition number 43991 in the amount not to exceed $24,999, and the placement of the child was for October 11th, 2018. Good morning, Bob Math of the Department of Health and Human Services on behalf of Children and Family Services. This is a, unfortunately a mission critical uh, placement for a a young teenager, uh, a young woman that was a, has a history of sexual abuse, was, a, was, a, was sexually abused, and also became an offender of, of abusing other children. Um, unfortunately, she's been in and out of detention home on several occasions, been in and out of several foster homes, been in and out of two local residential facilities, and because of the nature of her behavioral issues, um, DCFS could not find another placement here locally that, that could handle a, a a young, a young girl with these problems. So um, they did identify a Piney Ridge. It's an out-of-state um, provider that can handle this child's, that can meet this child's needs. I move to amend the agenda to consider the item. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Dever. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, the agenda is amended. Any questions on the item? Yes. Yes. Councilwoman Baker. Um, you said that, uh, I think you said that She's been under the care of the county for a while. Is she? Yeah, I don't how, know. How I don't have. Years have we been? Um, I would have to double check. I'm not sure how long she's been in custody. I mean, she's been in and out of detention home 
back in 2016 on, on, tw on two separate occasions, um, been out of several foster placements, and also been in Belfair in a, a New Beginnings residential facility, and they just, everybody was struggling with their behavior. For a while. I don't know exactly how long she's been in custody. I can surely find that out. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. And Councilman Millett. Are we planning to uh, incorporate Piney Ridge into our master contract? Yes, that'll be they'll be incorporating the 2018-2019 master contract. And how old is the child? Child's 13. 13. Struggling it's un with unfortunate. This for a long time. Pardon? Could be fighting with this for a long time. It could be, but yeah, finding a permanent placement for her may be very difficult uh -huh. in reality. Do I see here that you're figuring three hundred thousand dollars per year? Um, I'm not sure that dollar amount. I mean, the the per diem rate. I'm not sure the exact per diem rate. It's about somewhere neighbor about two hundred fifty to three hundred dollars per day. You know, that's kind of a typical going rate. So I think that three hundred when the DCFS they just kind of projected potentially how long she could be there. So potentially that could be the case. It's a, expensive propositions, unfortunately. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, I move to approve. Is there a second? Seconded by Mr. McAleer. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item passes. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other business? Other business at this time? Okay. Any public comment? And no public comment. I move to adjourn. Is there a second? Seconded by Councilman Miller. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. We are adjourned.